Hey guys, in this sew along tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to sew this adorable, what I call, cutie patootie monkey. All it really is, is a monkey head with a cute tail sticking out from the back, and it is so easy to make. Anyway, download the free printable pattern, and let's go. Let's make it. Let's get this cutie patootie monkey started. So you should have printed out four sheets of paper for the patterns, one, two, three, and four. And for this one, I wanted to show you quickly how to attach this very tip piece of the pattern here. And I made a little note there for you. So using your paper scissors, you'll cut it out and then we will tape it in place. And then we will continue cutting. Using a piece of tape, you are going to attach it here. And there we go. I did leave some whites, but I'm gonna trim that off. And now you're gonna cut out all of your patterns. So now that I have my patterns cut out, I've decided to use this cotton yellow for the face and the tail and ears, and then this flannel for the body. So I'm going to do it the same way I have this one. But of course, you can change things around. You can make a tail that's completely different. You can do anything as usual. So what I did to help myself stay organized is for the yellow, I am placing these pieces here because I know these need to be cut out. So the monkey face, the tail, and the ears. And then on my flannel, I'm placing the other ones as well. The monkey sides, the monkey front, monkey bottom, and the monkey back. So you know how this goes by now and how to cut it out. And for this very piece right here, we're going to need two. And you're going to need one this way and one the opposite way. So by now you know, if you've done my other projects, the best way to do this is to fold it, place it down, pin, and cut around. So you have the exact pieces. So as you're cutting out your pieces, I wanted to remind you of the notches on the paper pattern. Whenever you see these short little lines, what you're going to do is you're going to just give it a little snippet. You don't even have to go the entire length of the line, just a tiny little snip so that it serves as a reminder and matching point when we are working to sew together the monkey. All of my pieces are cut out. So to quickly review, I have four ears and you may have maybe two, uh, one color and two, another color. It's up to you if you want the front and back to be the same or different. I have two pieces for the tail. I have one monkey face front, monkey bottom, the monkey sides, which look like a teardrop, the monkey top head, and you also have the monkey back, two pieces. We are going to begin with the monkey top head piece and the monkey face. So this is where the notches come in and help us out. We need to lay this out this way to see how it really fits. And so we're gonna place them right sides together and we will match these notches. And we pin. And notice how I'm taking this and I am curving it around to match the front curve of the monkey head. Okay, until I get to this end piece here and it matches.
and if it doesn't go perfectly, meaning matching totally perfectly at the end, it's okay. It's okay if this point sticks out. Your monkey will still be fabulous. And you repeat the same process on the side. until you match the corners. And once they are matched, keep dropping these pins. Once they are matched, we are going to sew, and I'm gonna keep a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew around this curve. I like to use this side because I like to see the curve. So I'm gonna sew keeping a quarter of an inch seam allowance around keeping the curve. I'm gonna sew now around this curve and I like to work on this side so that I can see the curve and follow it better. And before you do that, just, just double check that this side here doesn't have any folds in it like this. Cause then if you sew over that, you'll have a fold on the front of your monkey face and you don't want that. So just make sure that the fabric is laying flat. I'm gonna keep a quarter of an inch seam allowance as we get started here. Back stitch and go. Slow is key when you are sewing curves. Notice how I'm going super slow and I'm fixing and making sure that the opposite fabric or the fabric underneath is not folded. And I'm going right over the pins because when you sew slowly, it is okay and it does work out. Backstitch on the ends. So this is sewn and I've used a uh, red thread so that you can see it. The top head is attached to the front face. So what you're going to do next is you're going to take the tail pin together, right sides together, and you're gonna sew, you're gonna make a back stitch there, you're gonna sew the curve all the way around and a back stitch up there. Turn it right side out and stuff it. After sewing the tail, I turned it right side out and I'm using my chopstick, one of the best tools ever, to help me turn it right side out and now I'm gonna stuff it. So when you're stuffing this, remember, Whenever you stuff any kind of strange sort of shape or object, always stuff at the very end first. So you're gonna need your chopstick or your fingers, whichever you feel work better for you, to push the stuffing all the way to the end. I think my finger or my thumb will work much better, yeah. It's always trial and error and you're just going to keep going until your tail is stuffed. I don't want my tail to be pretty stiff. I kind of want it to be sort of squishy so I'm not going to stuff it too much but you can make yours dense so that it may stick straight up or whatever whatever you want your monkey to look like. So I'm keeping mine just squishy, not dense. Loving this tutorial? Please subscribe so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos. Monkey tail is sewn and ready to be added to the back of the monkey. So this is the back of the monkey. These are the two pieces here that you've already cut out. And this I left here as a tail opening, just as a marking, so that you know where you're putting the tail. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sandwich the tail in between these two fabric pieces. So at about around here, it doesn't have to be exact. If you want, you can mark your fabric, but like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. It could be wherever you want. You can make yours lower or higher. I'm gonna place mine at right about there. And then again, on the right side, you're gonna take this piece and you're gonna match it up and pin it together. 
All right, so you're going to make sure that your corners match first. So here's an easier way to do it. Just match up your corners, put a pin, and then if you want, you can sandwich your tail in. Now you'll notice if you made your tail pretty dense that, um, you know, you may need a few more pins to pin this down and keep it together. So I am going to put it right in here so that when you turn it right side out, it's sticking up. You can flip it around to make it go down. It's your call on that, but I'm going to sandwich it here and I'm going to make it stick out just a bit. That ensures me that it's good and I will catch it when I am sewing. All right. And now I just keep matching up this rounded back curve and I pin and just like we did with the other part of the monkey head, we are going to pin this and sew it together. And again, with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, if you're making your seam allowance a little larger, that's absolutely fine. Just keep that same sewing allowance and seam allowance throughout the entire project. So now you're going to sew on this curve here, back stitching on the ends. This is now put together, sewn together, and you can see the back of the monkey is already coming together. So our next step is we're going to push this aside for a moment, and we're going to take our four monkey ears, and we are going to sew them all together. Well, two monkey ears together with two monkey ears, and we're going to leave this straight edge open. So we're going to sew around like we're creating a mini pouch, and we're going to backstitch on the ends. So backstitch all the way around, backstitch, turn them right side out. So we'll have our two monkey ears ready. I've sewn together the ears, and I've decided during my sewing to switch over and um, just switch the fabrics so they're not all yellow. So now what I'm doing is I am cutting notches just around the curve. So I'm gonna be really careful not to cut the actual uh, seam. And I'm gonna make these notches so that when I turn my ears right side out, they turn nicer. If you don't cut them, you may have a little jagged point on your curve, but that's fine if you don't mind them. I don't like seeing that, so I'm going to I decided to make the notches and there was my change of heart. I wanted the opposite side of the ears or the back of the ears, the same flannel color as the back of the monkey. So see how much nicer that turns because you made the notches. If you didn't, you'd have maybe a curve with like a little point and then continuing. So I'm not going to press these because I like them to be a little bit fluffy, but if you choose, and you want, you can press them quickly with the iron. The next step is to take your ears and place them on the monkey front head. So this is gonna be the back of my ear, so I'm gonna keep it this way because when I turn it right side out, I want the yellow on the front. So you're gonna place them around here. You can place them lower, you can place them higher. Your placement is your call. So I'm going to place mine right about here at about the same height. And then of course I will pin them to keep them in place. I don't want them to move as I'm sewing because that would be not good. I always like for them to stick out just a bit so that I know I catch them in the seam. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make one quick stitch, running stitch right over it. Monkey ears are quickly sewn in place so that I was able to remove the pins. So when I turn it right side out, I won't hurt myself. But of course, if you're very good and very careful, you can leave the pins in and not do the stitching. Now we're gonna leave this right side up and we're gonna take the monkey back and we are going to actually match it all up and pin it together. So what you're gonna do from here is your notch here is going to match with your seam here. So I'm gonna put those together and pin there first. And then I'm gonna work my way around keeping the ear tucked in. Make sure it lays flat and great. 
and out of the way. So before I finish pinning around the ear, I'm just going to double check that it won't get caught. So I may need to just give it a little fold. You may not, depending on where you placed yours. I just want to ensure that it doesn't get caught because then me and my seam ripper are going to have to sit here and take that ear out. And that's the part of sewing where you get a little aggravated. And I don't want that to happen to you. All right. And you'll see that it does match up nicely. So you're going to do one side all the way to the end. Not the bottom, just to this rounded edge. Okay, I'm going to stop right there just for this purpose. And then I am going to tuck this tail in. And if you find that it's annoying, you can easily give it a little pin in there to hold it down so that it doesn't bother you when you're uh, sewing. Whatever is easiest for you, you figure it out. I'm going to try with one and then I'll see if it shifts, I will come back and fix it. And I'm going to pin this side the same exact way. These are pinned together. We're ready to sew the sides, but I'm going to show you how to know where you're going to stop sewing, start and stop. So you're going to take one of these monkey sides that so looks like a teardrop and you are going to align it. You see this notch here with your notch there. And then you're just going to follow the curve. You're not pinning, you're just going to align it. You're gonna follow the curve and you're gonna make a pencil mark right up there. So this is your sewing point. Remember, pencil, not pen. You don't wanna stain your fabric. And you're gonna do the same thing on this side. Generally, people will mark their patterns before or actually like right after cutting the pattern, but I find that this is easier for my students. So we're going to do it this way. There you go. So now you have these marks here. So what you're going to do carefully as you squish this tail and get it out of your way, you're going to sew starting on either side. You're going to do a quick back stitch. And you're going to follow the curve nice and clean, slow as key up to this marking point. So you got these two marking points and you're going to sew your monkey together that way. I am at the sewing machine. I, I want to show you and walk you through this. So um, just in case you're wondering how to keep the tail in and not moving. So I'm going to get this part with my marking that I just did right under onto the sewing machine at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to sew and do my back stitch. And then notice how I'm sewing super slow <laughs> and I am keeping everything out of the way. And I'm carefully following the curve as I make my way around to the opposite marking. Slipped out of my hands. Back stitch on the ends. Before I turn this monkey right side out, what I like to do to save myself time is to inspect my seams and make sure that both fabrics are sewn together and I did not get too close to the edge and actually my finger pokes through. If it does, then I have to make sure to go back and re-sew a space that that may have happened. And then you can turn your monkey right side out. He is coming together. Step is to sew the sides of the monkey on. So you have two pieces cut like teardrops so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna turn your monkey right side, or my apologies, wrong side out. I always get those two confused, but by now you know that. 
And you are going to, as I get rid of the threads here, you're going to find the notches and you're going to match them just on one side. There are notches on both sides, but for this purpose, just one. So here's the best way to do it. This is my monkey face. I'm going to just match that notch with this teardrop notch. So make sure your right sides are touching and you are going to line this up just on one side here as I align myself. And we're gonna pin right there. And I'm gonna wait before I continue pinning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kinda make a little fold up here. Let me get in there. Okay, a little sort of fold up here. And I'm gonna just gently place it there so that I know it needs to go there. Now you can see how all of this comes together, right? So you can, it's okay if that lets go, or if you let go of that very end, you're gonna just pin this together. I just wanted to show you how it's going to come together and these curves align. All right, so leave a pin out there just for a second. And because this may be extra fabric that you sew, we just leave there hanging on the inside. And I want you to mat match this curve. You're not really matching the um, notch here, you're just matching the curve. So you could see that there's a little bit of a straight edge on your teardrop edge. I'm gonna match that roundedness together. And here too, you'll notice there's a notch up there, but we're gonna do it this way. It works out a bit better. And we're going to match this up. So you're gonna notice these are all matched up and well. So you will lay this over this point here. Let me take out that pin to show you. So this point, or we stopped sewing here, so kind of it's kind of like a triangle here. You're going to lay this over, and yes, you will have extra fabric. I, I designed it that way because maybe your sewing was slightly different, and just not to be super exact here, I designed it this way, just so that you wouldn't have any issues. So notice how I'm kind of straighten straightening it out. Here's why. When we begin sewing, we're gonna do four separate sewing or separate uh, seams. So when I sew, I'm gonna start from here and I'm gonna follow this curve all the way down to this notch. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna start a new seam and I'm gonna sew from this seam all the way down around and stop at that notch. That's what the notches are there for. So you're gonna lay this down knowing that. So as best as you can, you're going to lay it here and then begin your sewing, making sure that your fabric does not fold. So this is where you stop sewing, where your notches are right there. But where's my other notch? There. I've sewn the teardrop side in place. And like I said, this will be left over. Um, depending on your sewing, it may uh, feel like it shouldn't be there, but it's totally fine. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to pin it in place and sew it the same exact way. With my two sides sewn in place. I am going to now add the bottom of the monkey and I'm going to leave the back open, a good portion of the back open for my hand to fit in and to not only stuff, but to add the eyes of the monkey and the face. So I'm going to take this bottom piece and I'm going to first line it up with the seams. So the corners with the seams and I would let it overlap a little. It doesn't have to be exact just for this part. So you're gonna do your edges with the seams first. And it's gonna feel that it's maybe a little too big for the bottom of your monkey, but that's okay. Cause you're gonna take that extra fabric and you're gonna stuff it towards the center or the inside of the monkey. And I'll show you as I do mine here. Okay, this fabric is raveling up a, a little bit on me. Like the ends are like rolling up. 
okay two pins at once that I grabbed and I match up the edges so if I felt like I had extra I just pushed it towards the center so I match up the sides again trying to the best you can to take the corner and bring it to the edge of the seam here Again, if you have extra of the bottom fabric and you feel like there's too much because of your sewing, it does happen with this project, you can overlap it. You can make the bottom fabric overlap over. That's a repeat, but you know what I'm trying to say. You can make it come over. So here I feel like I'm having that. So I am going to, or actually it's just not pinned right here. Shame on you, Adriana. Hey. I always make mistakes, I tell you all the time. All right, and here, see how it overlaps? It's totally fine. It will not affect the end product of your monkey. And then here, I am going to remind myself to leave an opening. So just as my reminder, and enough for me to fit my hand, I'm just gonna sew up to a tiny bit of the sides. Just up to there, because I do need to reach my hand all the way in. So now, uh, my favorite way to do this is to actually feed this into the uh, machine under the pedal this way, because I like to see and make sure that this fabric does not fold, so I don't have any of these creases on the outside of my monkey. So I'm going to feed it in like this, put the presser foot down, and sew carefully around until I sew the shape of the bottom of the monkey. So you're basically closing this off. You can sew it from the back as well. You're basically gonna start from one of your end markings. So if you need, you can put your end markings on this side. All right, you're gonna come here, pivot, down, pivot, curve, pivot, up and here. And then we're gonna flip this monkey around. So now that my bottom of my monkey is sewn on, I'm gonna turn it around so, or right side out, so that I could see my work. And if I need to turn it back inside out to fix anything. So I like to just double check as I'm turning around that all the seams are together and it looks good. All right, this monkey's coming together. All right, so, um, now our next step is to, um, stuff it, but before we stuff it, the best thing to do with this is to actually turn these in and iron them. So you want to give them a little crease so that when you do your blind stitch or invisible stitch, you have a nice clean closing here and it looks great together. I'm going to fold this in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to make a crease with the iron. It'll be nice and clean when you sew it together. If you do it this way, if you don't have an iron, you can do what we call finger creases. You can scratch it to make a line there. But if you do have an iron, it is the better way to work with this. So you can see that my fabric is beginning to fray and I have all these threads hanging off. You can clean it up by giving it a trim, but I believe it's gonna happen more as I stuff it, so I'll wait till the end if I wanna trim. And just, I'm gonna finish off this crease and then I'm going to stuff, possibly not all the way because I wanna choose the eyes that I wanna add on to my monkey. As I'm stuffing my monkey, I'm reaching in first to the furthest part with not huge chunks of stuffing because you know you can make your monkey or any project you make a little lopsided. And now is the best time to really shape your monkey, meaning you're going to use your hand in there and your fingers to really manipulate and move that stuffing around to wherever you need it so that your monkey looks good. Because then if you change your mind when it's closed up, you're gonna be annoyed and you don't wanna take it apart. I, I already know that. <laughs> so get it to a good point here. We're gonna fill it halfway or maybe three quarters of the way and then we'll add the eyes.
I've decided for this monkey to give him these eyes here that have a black pupil with the iris being brown. I kind of like this these for this look. Uh, I love the black too, but I feel like it's too harsh. And then I really like these clear ones, but I'm not sure. Going with the black and I'm going to give it a brown nose. So I've decided to place them pretty close together like right about there. And remember, you change the pat, the not the pattern, but you change the look and the personality of your monkey depending on how you place your eyes. You can even do them fun googly eyed. So I am going to make my pencil marks as to exactly where I'm gonna make holes and put my eyes right there. Maybe it's not too close together. Yeah, not bad, right? And then maybe I'll move that one over just a bit. And then my nose will go right under. So my nose, yep, will go right under there. And now I'm gonna poke a very small hole because I don't wanna make it too big with this. So I'm gonna use my seam ripper. You can use anything else, but be careful not to make your hole too large because your eye may fall through or out. Okay, I made one there. Now I'm going to make one here. Just breaking a few fibers is, is enough for this fabric. And then I'm going to feed my hand through and get these eyes on. One. Put the backs of the eyes on. Hey, other eye, where'd you go? And then I will actually, you know what? I'll put this back on, the eye on, and then I'll clamp the other one on. So I have the backing. I'm just going to reach in and pop it on. It gets a little, there we go. I love leaving all my little happenings on video so that you notice it happens to all of us, whatever that is. I'm gonna clamp this guy in. Now I'm gonna do the same for the other eye and the nose. With my eyes and nose in place, I'm gonna finish stuffing this and we will together do the invisible stitch and blind stitch. And then for the last detail, I'm gonna draw in the mouth, which I'm still deciding what style mouth I want. Do I want like a really tiny mouth? Do I want it close here? Do I want it all the way down here and silly? Still deciding. Now we'll close up the opening with an invisible stitch or blind stitch. So I'm going to add a pin to just part of it so that it helps stay together. And if you find that your pin is sort of not staying uh, in place because the stuffing is pushing it open, then you're probably overstuffed. Like I'm okay here, but if it was fighting, I know that I'm overstuffed. So actually, I have a little bit of here opening up. So you know what? Let me start here. It's starting to fray. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. All right, let's pin this together. And I'll add just one more here. Mine is kind of fighting me, but I, I wanted this guy stuffed up a bit more. So I'll judge as I work up to it with the pit with the uh, blind stitch if I need to let some of the stuffing out okay you're gonna need your needle that is double threaded you can even use single threaded with a double knot and if you know how to do this you can move along but if not just watch you are gonna sew on the folded over flap the flap that is on the inside and I call it a flap okay you're gonna sew on that part as I try to hold him in place He's not behaving. <laughs> We're gonna fold that in, totally in. And now you're gonna come across to the opposite side and you're gonna do the same thing. I'm just, it's just challenging staying in the view of the camera and making the monkey behave, as you can see. We're gonna stuff that in there and we're gonna continue. And you're gonna follow the crease, small stitches close together this is called a blind stitch because your needle is not coming out 
to the outside so then you won't see the thread. So you're gonna keep following along. until you reach the other end. Remember, you wanna have stitches that stay up towards your crease where you ironed it and not come out to the outside. And if you need a better view of this or you're not sure, you can always go back to the very second or third class of mine where we do those simple pillows. You can watch that one as well. I explain it in a bit more detail. And I'm just gonna work my way to the end. Now that I'm getting to the end of my blind stitch, I'm just gonna remember to put my needle through the loop and give it a pull. And again here, put my needle through the loop, give it a pull. And if there's any extra loops, we'll cut that off. That always happens when I am on video and it never happens when I'm sewing on my own. So anyway, I'm gonna pull it through. I, I put the uh, needle through this seam, pull it, cut. It ends up in the stuffing, the ending somewhere of the thread. And because I have that little loop, I'm just gonna trim it. And my opening is closed. Now it's time to put in the mouth and we're gonna embroider it. So I've decided to make just a small mouth like this because my other one is completely different and I like to do different things with my projects. So my mouth is gonna be a simple line like that. You can do anything. You can add a tongue to it. You can just do whatever you'd like. I'm keeping mine simple. So we're gonna use our embroidering thread and I'm using red because I wanna pick up a little bit of the accent color in the fabric. And we're gonna use a needle with an eye that's large enough to take the thread. You're gonna flatten down this thread and you're going to press this eye right over it and through. So I'm not gonna knot it. I'm just gonna give myself a good length to work with. I don't need too much. I'm gonna knot, oh, actually, no, we're not gonna knot the end because I'm gonna show you how to do this without that. I'm going to start all the way down here and bring the needle out through the tip or the beginning of my line marking, my pencil marking, and I'm gonna leave that showing just a little. So I'm doing this instead of tying a knot because I don't want the knot to show on to the face. So we're gonna make small stitches. I'm gonna move ahead. And instead of moving ahead one second, you're going to, or one step, you're gonna back it up into that same spot and then move ahead. Now, if you keep your stitches small, you're gonna be able to keep the curve of this mouth. But if you make your stitches really long, because you feel like, I don't know, you maybe you want to get it done quicker, you'll get a little bit more of a jagged line. And I don't, I definitely don't want that look. So let's get right in there. I'm going to keep tracing as I draw, like I like to say with my thread. And the end of the thread is inside and it is there and held tight because we sort of sewed right over it. I'm feeling it not there, just making sure it's all okay. That's coming out really nice. And I'm going to make my way all the way to the end. And then I'll show you how to end this mouth. Now that I'm on the very last stitch for the mouth, I'm going to just do this last one. And I want to show you how I end it off. Pull it through. I'm going to go over this one once more. Almost going over it. And I am actually going to make a knot this time. And then I'm going to go under this here, under this last stitch. I'm going to do the same. 
this end off here i'm going to pull tight and cut close to the fabric but don't cut the fabric and then it ends up into the ending and stuffing i mean and it is tight and there and will not fall apart so this monkey is done and is adorable and has a funky shape but that's what makes him so different and cute if you enjoyed this tutorial why don't you also check out my other video on how to sew a mama duck and her baby ducklings right up here on the screen thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video